In this lesson, we're going to be learning about multi-step inequalities. So we're going to learn how to solve multi-step inequalities and then how to use multi-step inequalities to solve real-life problems. To solve multi-step inequalities, simplify each side of the inequality if necessary. So that means combine all like terms, um, evaluate any operations that you need to, and simplify any parentheses using the distributive property. Then use inverse operations to isolate the variable. Be sure to reverse the inequality symbol when multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So that is get all your variable terms on one side, your constant terms on the other side, and then when you're multiplying or dividing, just make sure if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number that you have to flip the inequality sign. All right, solve each inequality, graph each solution. So I'm going to rewrite the first inequality. y over negative 6 plus 7 is less than 9. So I look at this inequality and I say, okay, uh, both of my sides are simplified. I only have a variable on the left side right now. So I just want to focus on canceling out the addition first, and then I'll cancel out the division afterwards. So to cancel out this positive 7 term, I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides. So I get y over negative 6 is less than positive 2. And I see that I'm dividing by negative 6 from this y. So to cancel out division by negative 6, I'm going to multiply by negative 6 on both sides. So I'm going to put parentheses around both sides and then put my negative 6 here, showing that I'm multiplying by negative 6. So these negative 6 sixes cancel. This becomes negative 12. But remember, anytime I multiply or divide by a negative number, I need to flip this inequality symbol. So this less than is going to become a greater than. So I get y is greater than negative 12. So to graph this, I'll draw my number line, put three values here. You can put more if you want. So I'll put negative 12 negative 11, and then I'll put negative 13 here. And since there's no equal to, I'm going to have an open circle. And since it's greater than, we want all the values that are larger than negative 12. I'm going to have this arrow point to the right. And now we're done with this one. For part B, I'm going to rewrite this inequality as well. 2V minus 4 is greater than or equal to 8. And I'll draw a little dividing dashed line. So what I want to do here is same thing. I want to get rid of this negative 4 by adding 4 on both sides. And I bring down 2v is greater than or equal to 12. And now I see that v is being multiplied by 2, so I'm going to divide 2 on both sides to cancel that out. And I get v is greater than or equal to 6. Note that I did not flip this inequality symbol because I did not divide by a negative number here. Hey, and then to graph this, I'll draw my number line here. I'll just clean this bottom up. So I have my number line, 5, 6, and 7. I'm going to have a closed circle right now uh, because we do have this being equal to 6 or greater than 6. So oops, I will have my arrow go to the right. And this um, represents all the solutions that would make this inequality true. So any number that is 6 or larger that we plugged in for v uh, would make this inequality true. So now we're done. Okay, so now we have an example with variables on both sides, and it just says to solve it. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I, I see that both sides are simplified, um, and now I want to get all of my variable terms on one side and all my constant terms on the other side. And remember, the way that we move terms from one side to another side of an inequality or an equation are by using addition or subtraction. So I'm going to choose to cancel out this 2x on the right side and move it over here. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. And before I subtract 2x on both sides, I'm actually just going to rewrite my inequality. 6x minus 5 less than... 2x plus 11. So now I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. And I, I'm going to end up getting 4x over here. And then these are going to cancel. And I'll bring down my inequality symbol. But I can also move my constants to the other side in the same step. So I can get rid of this minus 5 because now my variable is going to end up on the left side. So I can have my constants be on the right side. And these x's are going to cancel out. So uh, this minus 5, the way I'd cancel that out, is adding 5 on both sides. Once again, you could do this in a separate step if you'd like. I prefer to do it this way. 
So anyway, I bring this down, 11 plus five is 16, so I get four x is less than 16. And then to solve this, all I have to do is just divide by four on both sides to cancel out, cancel out the multiplication by four. And I get x is less than four. And this is my inequality. It doesn't tell us to graph, so I'm not gonna graph here, but you could graph this if you wanted to. Uh, but anyway, now we're done. So for part A in this example, we have 8B minus 3 is greater than 4 times the quantity 2B plus 3. So anytime we see a problem like this, and I'm going to scroll down a bit, we want to um, simplify both sides. So I'm going to distribute these parentheses here, okay? And you should rewrite this uh, problem down in your notebook. But anyway, I'm going to distribute the 4 to the 2B and the 4 to the 3. So I get 8B minus 3 is greater than 8b plus 12, okay? And now what I wanna do is I wanna move my variables onto one side. But if you see, I have an 8b on the left and an 8b on the right. So when I subtract 8b to cancel out one of them, they're both actually going to cancel. So this becomes just negative three is greater than 12. Well. I don't have my variables anymore. So now I just have to see whether or not this is true. Negative three is greater than 12. Well, that's not true. Negative three is smaller than 12. So there's no value of B that I can plug into this to make this become true. So since this is not a true statement, this is a no solution case. There are no solutions that will make um, this inequality true. So our answer is no solution. Now we're done with part A. For part B, I'm going to distribute to start off to simplify the left side of the equation to both terms. So I get 10w minus two is less than or equal to seven plus 10w, okay? Uh, and now I see that I have two 10w terms, one on the left and one on the right. So I'm gonna cancel them both out by subtracting 10w on both sides and they cancel out. So I just get Negative two is less than or equal to seven. Well, if I look at this, negative two is less than seven. So negative two does fit this criteria. Remember, uh, the word or in math means that only one of the criteria needs to be true. So since negative two is less than seven, uh, it does fit in the less than or equal to seven. So because this is true, it doesn't matter what I plug in for w. I can plug in any value for uh, w and I will get a true inequality. So this is the all real numbers case or the all values of W case, okay? So I'm gonna write down all real numbers or all values of W. Now, uh, a common mistake would, would be to call this the infinitely many solution case. Uh, the infinitely many solution case is really only applicable to equations because all inequalities, for the most part, well, almost all, I should say, have infinitely many solutions, but we want, to, we want to be more specific. In this case, it doesn't matter what value W is because it will be true no matter what. So this is all values of W or all real numbers. You need a mean score of at least 90 points to advance to the next round of the touchscreen trivia game. What scores in the fifth round will allow you to advance? So if we look over here, mean... The word mean in math means average. It just means we add up all of our values and then divide them by how, however many values we have. So here we have four values, and we know that there's going to be a fifth uh, game. So we really have a total of five values. So we have all of these values plus our fifth one, which we don't know yet. And we're going to divide that all by five because there's five of them. And then we want that to be at least 90. So at least, if you remember, it means 90 or more. Um, and we can use the greater than or equal to, okay? So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write that all out. So remember, our mean is if we add up all of these values plus our unknown one, which I'll call X. I'll call our fifth game, we'll call that X, okay? So if I add up games one, two, three, four, and then X, and divide that by five, that will give me my mean score. So 95 plus 91 plus 77, plus 89, and then plus whatever our fifth game is, x all divided by five, 
needs to be at least 90. So it's 90 or more. I'm going to use greater than or equal to 90. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out here a bit. So now I just need to figure out what scores, and I'll scroll back up here, what scores in the fifth game will allow us to advance uh, to the next round. So all i got to do is simplify this uh, inequality right here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all my like terms here. I'm basically just going to add up all of these. So I'll do that over here. So 95, 91, 77, and 89. If I add these up, I get 5 plus 6. 5 plus 1 is 6, excuse me. Plus 7 is 13. 13 plus 9 is 22. Grab the 2. So I get 11, 20, 27, 35. So we get 352 here. So I'm going to rewrite my next step down here is going to be 352 plus x all over 5 is greater than or equal to 90. Okay? Now, there's actually two things I could do. The first thing I could do is I could split this up into 352 over 5 plus x over 5 and then move that term over. But I think there's a much easier way. I personally believe that it is much easier to get rid of this entire division by 5. Um, if you see the entire left side is being divided by 5, so to cancel out dividing by 5, I can just multiply the entire uh, left side and right side by 5. So I'm going to put parentheses around both sides. Whenever I want to multiply by both sides, you should put parentheses around it. And I'm going to put 5 here and 5 here. If you notice, these 5s are going to cancel out. So I just get 352 plus x is greater than or equal to, well, 90 times 5 is 450. And now all I need to do is get rid of this 352 term, and then I'll have x all by itself. So to cancel out positive 352 term, I'm just going to subtract it on both sides of the inequality. Okay, so I get x is greater than or equal to, well, you could borrow if you want, you get 10 minus 2 is 8, and then 14 minus 5 is going to be 9. So we know that our value for our fifth game, we need to score at least 98 points. So here's the inequality. I don't think it says to graph. It doesn't. It says what scores in the fifth game will allow us to advance. So this is our inequality. X is greater than or equal to 98. So for a word problem, I like to have a word answer. So we need at least 98 points in the fifth game or round or whatever it is. And now we're done.